hello and welcome to this episode uh, of Rethink India Masterclass. Uh, today we have uh, the vivacious, versatile, and visionary Edu leader, Madam Sujit Khanna, uh, the founder principal of DPS Greater Faridabad. Uh, Madam has been a votary of experiential learning all through her stellar uh, academic career spanning 33 years plus. And she has been nurturing multifaceted uh, personalities uh, with stupendous skill sets, but uh, uh, all instilled with humane sensibilities. So welcome you, ma'am, to this episode of Rethink India Masterclass. We would be your pupil, your students for the next 30 35 minutes. And we would be seeking some of the, uh, some of the answers uh, from a master like you who has been inspiring a whole generation uh, to take on the futuristic frontiers and the challenges which uh, these uh, uncertain times uh, have really brought out to us. Welcome, ma'am, to, to the show. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you for this honor to admit um, to you both, especially. And uh, Rethink has been very, very kind to DPS Greater Paridabad. I think our association started in 2017 and uh, you have been kind enough to find us worth many of your awards for the Futuristic School, Progressive Principal and the New India Champion School as well as awards for our faculty. And uh, therefore in all that we are today, we perceive your contribution as very tangible and very real. So thank you for supporting DPS Greater Faridabad and like us, many other schools of our country. Thank you. Ma'am, we are just platform. The entire set of hard work and accomplishment is all yours. And uh, to start with, Madam has a very unique pedagogy of educating the kids with very inspiring set of videos. And we were, uh, uh, we were fortunate enough to receive a couple of them. So before uh, we start this formal introduction, uh, introduction and session, I would like to play this lovely video. Uh, my school is waiting for me. Uh, such a passionate and a fervent story Madam has narrated herself uh, in her own voice. Uh, so we would just start, we would just have a look, viewers, uh, this small video of five minutes. Uh, which, which summarizes the spirit which is being lived and led at DPS Greater Faridabad, the fantastic 17-acre campus on the banks of Yamuna. So I would just uh, play it across. <clears throat> COVID-19 is a rather nasty virus that makes people very sick when cough cold and fever. No one likes it. So everyone, whether young or old, is staying home with all doors shut. Every home agrees that no matter how much banking COVID-19 does, doors won't open. Like most schoolgoers, Amara, a cheerful child, has been missing her school, her classmates, and all the fun of school, even though Bindu Man, her lovely class teacher, has been actively in touch with her with amazing online lessons. One day, a wonderful thing happened. Bindu Man has planned a surprise for you tomorrow, Amara, said Niharika. Oh, really? I can't wait, said Amara, pushing back her unruly hair, while her eyes shone bright. At exactly 11 a.m. next day, Bindu Ma'am appeared on the laptop screen. Hello, my dear children. Surprise! Would you like to visit your school without even opening your door? Oh, yes, I would, chirped Amara in excitement. Magically, Amara's vibrant school, DPS Greater Faridabad, came alive on the laptop screen. Let's say a namaste 
to our alert guard pay us. Bow our heads before the statue of Mars Sarasur and head straight for our classroom in Little Wonders Wing. And here we are. Your classroom is sparkling clean, just as you find it every morning, with your toys, story books, puzzles, and all the play material in place. Turn around. Who's that? Laughing with joy. Oh, it's the swings of the happiness bow. Surrounded by gleeful cheers, zebras, giraffes, kangaroos, and the elephant. Do you remember the fun we have here? Shouting, running, playing, celebrating different festivals all the year around. The dolphins in the splash pool? Oh my goodness, they are waiting for you to join them. And won't that be wonderful? Hey, who's that asking for a carrot? Oh my goodness, it's the horses who are named to say a big hello to you. Our gardener payers, so diligent, are making sure that all our gardens and extensive school grounds are a lovely green and ready for all our activities. All the buses, all of them, get a cool bath and an ignition check every day. And all your favorite places of learning in the school, to name just a few, let's talk about your toy room, the super cool amphitheater, the assembly stage, the libraries with stacks and stacks of books, your high-tech labs, and the 161 rooms with corridors of all the blocks. They are missing you too. Amara clung to every image Bindu Man showed of the school and her spirits rose. And yes, let me tell you about one more person who visits DPS GF to keep it sanitized, safe, and ready for you. It's our promiser, Mr. Rohit Chenendra Chen, who wants all of you to be very cheerful and hopeful. The online visit over. Amara told everyone in the home, my school is waiting for me. I love my school. And turning to her mom, she asked, what is the meaning of this word hopeful? How do you spell it, Mom? Quite clearly, Amara was feeling very secure. It's truly yeah. majestic walkthrough, ma'am. It just uh, awesome, absolutely so so. Reverberating now. Who does these amazing videos at uh, DPS Creator for the Man? Oh, and let me give you a, a story behind this video. I got a call from a parent mm -hmm. who asked me that, can you please talk to my daughter mm -hmm. and tell her that you are very much there and the school is very much there because she worries about whether her teachers, whether principal ma'am, whether my school building, you know, what's happening to them? How are they? Everything is changing. So I talked to her. I spent good about 10 minutes talking at length with the child. And I thought about it, that this must be a concern with a lot of young children who are not understanding what COVID is or why COVID is altering their world so much. And also I wanted to tell them, I wanted to add to their sense of inner security and confidence in life to say that just as your parents are around, your school and your teachers are very much around too. And we're not going anywhere and we are strong for you. So, uh, so that's how it started and it's part of our program, uh, which is titled Building Connections. 
So under this program, we very energetically look for new and new ways to connect with the school family and the community at large. So in fact, one of the first initiatives that we took when our uh, school had to shut down in terms of this program was uh, family ties under COVID-19. So that, that, that reached out to all students across the school mm -hmm. to relate to the school, to get back and express to the school how they are feeling and how they are organizing their world at home. And of course, when images come on the Facebook page and they are there for the entire school family to see, then uh, the distances become less. And, uh, you know, you start feeling, yes, people are uh, not very far away after all. And uh, the Facebook page is a very, very powerful medium for connecting with each other. So that is, uh, it's under the ages of that program that we carried out our second story as well. Can I name a star? We would be and we have few yes. others. Yeah. We would be playing that at the end of this interaction. <laughs> Again, a very lovely, very. Uh, yeah. Very, very kind of you. I mean, uh, it's wonderful, uh, and but I'm not surprised because I've always in my interactions found you both to be ex extremely warm. I mean, you're both intellectuals, but your uh, human quotient is very strong and you make every school feel special, which is why I think all schools of India love to be connected with Rethink. So I'm so glad that you have taken note of this. And it's a compliment to our and my school family because this is entirely an internal uh, uh, product. Mm -hmm. So all made at at, uh, at school with people at home at different locations and getting together. So because we understand so that producing such high quality videos because videos is the highest form of expression uh, in the modern multimedia formats. It's really cumbersome, the scripting, uh, the selection of the visuals, the narration. So it's really a stupendous effort. And if it's being done at DPS Greater Faridabad, it's certainly uh, really, really very inspiring. And it shows the commitment, especially of, the, especially of your office, you in particular, uh, because this is majestic. Uh, uh, we just get to learn that... Uh, DPS uh, Greater Faridabad was celebrating its uh, seven years of inception and the lockdown hit us. It was seven years baby and then it was closed down. So what was the initial uh, cycle, initial response of the whole community? I could see that the young toddlers, uh, they had a big emotional impact because they are the ones who have a very one-on-one -on -one connect with their school. School is there in the home. Their teachers, they're, they're all, the way you have narrated, the gardener bhaiyas, the security bhaiyas, it's a, it's a universe for themselves and they revel in that whole universe. So how you embarked upon, how you took it back, uh, tell us more about that uh, transformation from a physical school to a digital connect. Uh, right. Uh, you know, we were fortunate that we had finished with our annual examination by the time COVID uh, really became a real entity for schools. And uh, the first challenge for us, it had two aspects to it. One was declaring the result online of the entire school from nursery to nine. And uh, the second aspect was ensuring that the time of the board classes, especially the 10th and 12th, you know, how do we ensure that not a moment is lost? So even as soon as we heard that uh, classes may be no longer allowed, even before the government lockdown, we got started. Our first reaction was of anxiety. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you teach online? Nobody's ever taught online, you know. And uh, what are the devices people have? What's the bandwidth you have? All right. And uh, can you stare into a screen and teach and connect and make sure that your words are just the right words and your explanation is just right for the 25 minutes or 40 minutes capsule that you would be planning for different age groups? And what all do you want to bring into it? 
how do you uh, make this tool art, ERP uh, a tool for a strong scaffolding of whatever you wish to teach? What technology do we need to learn? And are we mentally ready? And there, I mean, the reactions, to be very honest, were varied. Some were very excited, some were very apprehensive, and some said, give me any other work, but don't give me this. <laughs> you know? So, but then we had to persuade everybody, come on, we are a team, we can do it. And uh, I remember the first few teachers who said that, ma'am, you know, you've seen how people look at the videos of Khan Academy. They criticize them also. And they say, this, is, this one is okay, this one is not okay. I said, let's become as famous as the Khan Academy. <laughs> okay, let's aim for that. And we are not going to worry about, uh, you know, who likes so long as we are confident that we, we've done it well, that's all that matters. So the josh was high, you know, all right, are you ready? Yes, are you, will you take it on? Yes, will you help? Yes. And the most beautiful thing that I am so proud of is that the leadership for launching the school online came from within the school. Oh. We did not reach out to anybody. We asked our IT team, are you ready? You think you can initiate the whole 200 teachers of the school into it? They said, yes, ma'am, we can do it. And you'll be very, very happy to know that on 18th of March, we started our online classes for class 10 and 12. Wow. And at that time, yes, there no other school, in, at least in Faridabad, nobody had started. And even within the uh, broader spectrum of schools, not much had been done. It happened in the week thereafter, a lot of it. But on 18th, we were ready and sailing. And uh, on 20th, we declared our result online. And uh, we had given a week off to our children. Uh, because of a lot of holidays falling in the first week of April uh, to, with the intent to start school on 7th. So we used that one week to get the 200 teachers together. A lot of brainstorming, a lot of uh, initiation into uh, the technologies per se, a lot of peer training happened. And, uh, you know, uh, I take heart from small little incidents like like a teacher of art uh, sending me a message at about 11.45 at night to say that, ma'am, I'm now ready. I was very scared and I reached out to another colleague and from the IT department and we have spent two hours together and she's gone over everything with me all over again. So I am now ready. And this was only a support function that uh, the art teacher initially needed to perform because we had the main teacher after a timetable was made and a support teacher who would take care of the attendance, who would uh, take care of uh, the questions being raised by the children or the parents. And, you know, as they come in the chat box, making sure that the teacher is able to pay attention to them. And uh, uh, so things like that. And even to be a little, uh, you know, careful on somebody breaking into uh, the chat room or, you know, some unauthorized entry that might be there. So we found that uh, this was a good way. It left the co-teacher in charge of that lesson free for her co-duty of teaching and just watching the children reaction and responses. And uh, the uh, support teacher took on a lot of uh, the additional work. And uh, we also made sure that our teachers went through a proper workshop on cyber safety. We requested Mr. Rakshit Tandon to conduct a workshop specifically for our school. And it was an extended workshop where he took the teachers through all the nuances of cyber safety and uh, made sure we, we got our advisory for students ready, for parents ready, for the teachers ready. And we were uh, then in a position to be more confident about how we are going to deliver lessons. And uh, I'm extremely proud that uh, 
our lessons that would, I hope uh, God above is listening, they have so far gone very, very smoothly with none of these disruptions, which many uh, schools have unfortunately had to face. So, so we started... So it's really yes. a triumph of the entire teacher community at DPS Data Faridabad who took on uh, technology in the right earnest. They were all caught unawares. There was no yes. way to have a long, prolonged kind of a deployment. Uh, it was all uh, within no time. Uh, you deployed it all and uh, delivered it to the students at large. Uh, this is really okay. encouraging, ma'am. Uh, what were the uh, what were the uh, responses of the parents per se? Because we have been interviewing the other uh, principals, and uh, there have been concerns. Like initially, parents had issues. So, how the parents responded to this entire transformation? Uh, uh, you know, uh, I think one of the strengths of DPS Greater Faridabad has been our relationship with our parents. Okay. Uh, it's a relationship rich school and uh, we have always made ourselves very accessible and very open to their suggestions. And uh, so we had our relationships in place. There was trust. Of course, there were questions. There was a lot of explanation required. We had to make sure that we were reaching out to every student with all the technical assistance that was required by children. While the older children are, you know, they are even a shade better than the teachers, but the younger ones are not. Mm -hmm. And uh, the mothers, many mothers, uh, for instance, uh, were getting initiated into educational technology for the first time. So a lot of hand holding was required. So our, we had our WhatsApp groups at senior uh, level for direct interaction and at the middle and junior school, we had the broadcast group where parents could post a query and a reply was sent to every, every query. And for every subject, apart from the class teacher, additional one or two teachers were uh, given as contacts for any query that they might have and they can immediately reach out to. So I personally feel that our success, uh, online success has a lot to do with the response and support of our parents. I mean, they literally became co-educators with us. Okay. So they were giving the time. Yeah. You really and, uh, have been the learning compact where the teacher, the parent and the child. So the Yes, it's this triangle. Yes. Triangle. Yes. I mean, this, this triangle is the greatest truth of a school, of every school. It is the greatest truth, right? So as, as strong as this triangle is, that strong is the school. So I am indebted forever to parents of our school who have, uh, you know, really given support. Even at times when something was not just right, the attitude was, we know, ma'am, this is a new time. This is a new uh, way of teaching for teachers. It's all right, ma'am. The teacher will learn. The teacher will, uh, you know, get a hang of uh, all the mechanisms of uh, the uh, program. We got lots of appreciation mails. And I would be lying if I said that there was not a single mail of criticism. Uh, that 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 would be not the truth at all but there were a few which reached out uh, in terms of suggestions some said uh, that uh, they are not in uh, agreement with young children being taught online these kind of mails a few were there mm -hmm. but then we made an effort to reach out talk at length i mean we did not ignore a signal response as far as the online teaching Mm -hmm. the transaction of the curriculum and activities was concerned. And we tried to make it uh, diversified, not all academic, getting a fair component of uh, mental <laughs> wellness, especially like mental wellness was one important aspect for the senior students. Uh, it was not so much of music and dance for them. We had uh, physical uh, activity, but we had a lot of uh, conversations with them you know, just general conversations on how you are and how life is and how you are handling it. 
With the younger ones, we try to get the uh, component of diversified performing arts into storytelling and science experiments. And, uh, uh, you know, like for instance, Minecrafts, using Minecrafts, constructing the temples, the structures of the temples using Minecraft. Okay. That activity came out beautifully. I mean, all the famous temples of India were mm -hmm. picked up by children and they were dissected for their architecture and reconstructed uh, using uh, Minecraft. So I think if you have gone through an experience like that, then you're not likely to forget it. And then we also selectively participated in few uh, online competitions like the National Science Center. They had a national competition uh, and uh, there were five category. I, mean, I think they received a uh, thousand plus, I don't remember the number now, of videos. And they, uh, across the country, they shortlisted 18 for the final round. And out of those 18, five were from our single school. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was huge for us. Mm -hmm. And of course, then we had to lobby for uh, votes and that was also like the whole school family coming together i mean there was total madness and people i have never reached out to for years i reached out to them in the middle of the night come on we are short of these many votes we, we need you we need you and my children were abroad i said put on your facebook i, I need these votes and the uh, alumni of the school also pitched in, you know, with their friends. So it became like a whole DPSGA family lobbying to help our children win. And so we won uh, a couple of first positions and a couple of second or something like that. But everybody made it to the first three. So that was huge for us. I think then we had a competition with, uh, there's a, a Mindbox a program, an IT creativity program. Mm -hmm. We uh, participated actively in them. And then we have also created another museum for mass making, things like that. So we've responded selectively, not every activity, but diversified platforms of repute and credibility. Mm -hmm. We did pick them up and we responded to their uh, call for uh, competition. I think what I can gather from all this set of experimentations, like from initial anxiety to apprehensions uh, to appreciations, uh, DPS Greater Faridabad ascended on this roller coaster ride. And I think an entirely pedagogical shift has happened as online yes. learning was generally known as. I think with the force of 200 seasoned educators at the back having a live interaction and mentoring. I think the entire paradigm of online education is exp exponentiated in its right earnest. Because earlier online learning was just there are some master trainers somewhere in some studio recording some videos and putting up some gaming mechanism. It didn't enchant the students. It's the life force of a teacher, a concerned teacher, I would say. A second mother who is nurturing that baby. I think that is the yeah. secret behind this phenomenal success man bows to you it's like after each and every section the kind of commitment which is there because losing hope is very easy but what you have you've transformed a crisis a challenge into a phenomenal opportunity and the kind of linkages which have happened mine uh, mine uh, what? minecraft minecraft in yeah. another museum like arts and architecture has been embedded integrally with science like the whole mandate of steam has really taken a, a different turn altogether. This is really mind boggling. Yeah. You, you know what? I feel that the textbook curriculum, it's, it's, uh, it's, it, is, it is there. It's very real and it is there. And it's not changing except that NCRT may uh, reduce some syllabus, etc. But the way in which you have learned to teach it now, mm -hmm. right? It has altered the syllabus itself, I feel. Mm -hmm. It has altered the teacher. It has altered the learner. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is not to say that we have perfected it. Uh, I, I am very, very aware of this, that there are 213 countries out there fighting COVID. Mm -hmm. And we are already talking in terms of 
pre-COVID and post-COVID times, and we are talking of the new normal. So there, there is a requirement for a lot more growth, mm -hmm. a lot more thinking, rethinking, like the word, such a beautiful word, you know. So there's a lot of rethinking required by all of us. Mm -hmm. And especially in the domain of assessment, I feel that even though as a school, we have conducted uh, online written assessment mm -hmm. using uh, Google Doc and uh, Google uh, Classroom, and we've also done uh, online MCQ assessment using Aristotle Assess ED program. Okay. Uh, and we have done a lot of oral testing in, within the class, etc. Mm -hmm. But I feel that this is one area we are going to look at even more closely as time passes mm -hmm. and we understand more and more what are the options or are the alternatives. Uh, like in, I remember the initial excitement on using breakout, like it seemed, oh, wow, you know, we've been able to use breakout and we had students in groups and they discussed and they got together. It seemed like a phenomenal achievement, mm -hmm. but we've passed that. Now we have to look at what more we can do because not all children we think are coming back all together very quickly at school. But another area which is, it's very strong on my priorities is building a sense of responsibility towards cyber ethics mm. protecting children from predators and also strengthening their value system because that's how they will learn to be responsible netizens and they'll be responsible towards each other otherwise one student inadvertently might put another one at risk Okay. Right. And parents, because they are so used to now seeing their children with devices mm -hmm. that they have stopped monitoring the way they used to earlier. Mm -hmm. And that absence of uh, monitoring can allow the dark and underbelly of the cyberspace to emerge mm -hmm. and connect with students. And that's one potential hazard I am very, very conscious of. Mm -hmm. And then there are a few positive things I want to do. Like, for instance, I want to start uh, an online newsletter of the school. Okay. Something we didn't have, but we want to do that now. I want to start an online art gallery of the school because children are doing amazing artwork at home. And uh, though I keep getting uh, snapshots of, from the teachers and from the parents, and a lot of it is put on the Facebook, yet I feel that it will be a good idea to make a kind of a selection and start off this initiative. So uh, this is right now, it's uh, both these things, I mean, the, the circular for the online uh, newsletter got finalized yesterday and the online art gallery, I'm still talking to our uh, website developer at school, that how, are we, how can we do it? So, so we are looking at so it's an accelerated pace of innovation and experimentation each day uh, i i'm seeing it a lot of ideas which used to get stifled in the regular logistical issues probably yes. this uh, this has given you the time and opportunity and the focus uh, to probably embark upon uh, another i would say a mars mission to mars kind of a journey <laughs> You know, um, we had a very interesting, uh, we had two activities which were quite interesting. I, somehow you will find me coming back again and again to our connect, you know, with each other. Uh -huh. So this was about uh, the uh, histories, the little known histories uh, about people and places and events of India and the world. So we threw it open to students that uh, where you think that uh, some historical people or places places or events haven't got highlighted, but they were amazing events. Mm -hmm. So we had a lot of children unraveling the history uh, areas and stories about this battle and this person and this place. And then we also had the Think Aloud series, uh, you know, uh, like uh, the, where a prompt is given at senior school level and you respond. Like the last year's prompt was your response to any visual that you have seen in the media across the world. 
So we actually had amazing entries of children. I mean, there were images which I hadn't seen, none of them I had seen. Mm -hmm. So I knew that these children have really sat down and searched them out. And those uh, visuals were even cartoons, there were paintings, there were photographs, so uh, things like that. So, you know, it's good for children to look at the world a little more analytically, a little more curiously, because it is their world. I mean, you're living it. You better know this world. You are part of it, right? So, uh, so I, I think that was a good uh, initiative. It shaped up very well. And we are now carrying it to our middle school mm -hmm. in the coming week. It starts on the environment day for the middle school. So, so things you, like that. Uh, how do you envisage all these experimentations to get institutionalized, further, I would say formalized, uh, specifically in the uh, universe of DPS Greater Faridabad and also in the larger context of schooling system in the country? Uh, like NCRT has uh, just come with an alternate calendar for the senior years, 11th and 12th. Yes, just recently. Yes, yeah. So at the policy level, at the regulatory level, also a lot of thinking is going on to push through a lot right. of reforms, which were reforms under courts, which were uh, being seen as futuristic frontiers of education. So how do you see these? How do you visualize these futuristic frontiers shaping up? Uh, you know, uh, it calls for a school to be very aware, number one. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, got, you can't be shutting out information. You got to be looking for information. Then it requires schools to look at that information in context of its own locality, local areas, its own resources, uh, the kind of students and parents you have. All right, because if there are amazing good things in the world, but every good thing of the world cannot cannot be successfully implemented by you. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are a lot of amazing uh, work being done by different schools. You look at that, you admire, and you say, "Wow!" And and then you somewhere keep it at the back of the mind, but it's not that you immediately come home and start doing that. So you look at your own strengths, you understand your own ground realities, your own resources, and what motivates you. You might do the same thing in a different way and not exactly the way somebody else did it. But I am inclined to consider integration of art as very, very important because I feel that people who are aesthetically alive are positive and happy people. Mm -hmm. And uh, even our school campus, uh, we haven't had, uh, unfortunately, the opportunity to have you visit us. Uh, but our campus shot, is but, like a... Yeah. But <laughs> a fabulous snapshot right in that video. Yeah. And it was such a majestic yeah. campus walkthrough yeah. uh, that our days of the school, we, we just went 30 years back. <laughs> what kind of... <laughs> So it was yeah, back to lampy lanes. Absolutely, yeah. so so yeah. full of uh, you know we could see the motifs you know the each and every corner you know it's like it's been energized mm. with uh, positive uh, vibration and motivation for the students, imaginative uh, learning, mm. creative learning, and as we uh, as uh, medically also know the right part of the brain you know and the left part of the brain so the right part is for the creative. Aspect. So it's very important when we are developing the left part of the brain, the right part should also be equally developed. So ours, as a, your emphasis is so very, uh, I mean, uh, hats off to ma'am because this is really good. Because the right part is the, you know, the emotional quotient and the entire creative learning, it enhances the, 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 the brain and develops holistically. And that's yes. the power. So yes. uh, we are all using only 15% of our brain capacity and often we develop the left logical brain through all our uh, technical and uh, you know intellectual pursuits and questions and and the 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 foray into that but the right part gets sometimes not that stimulated so this is yes. really, this is really awesome so that's a scientist in you speaking the medical the scientist right so but you are so right but you know this is uh, uh, I personally, as a student, was uh, not very strong in maths and science, and uh, but uh, literature was good, and that became my gateway to the world. 
And uh, so uh, I do realize that uh, maths and science are very powerful because they teach you amazing skills and they build your mind to be logical and analytical. But I think that in case uh, you want to participate in this huge world, which is so exciting and so colorful and so diversified and I mean, just beyond imagination. So then you have to have your other senses active and alive. So multiple intelligences is, yes. is an important reality for us. And we try and, uh, you know, promote it in a big way. Mm -hmm. In a big way. In fact, our school is like an art gallery. Mm -hmm. uh, at, at every corner and turn, you will find artwork done by children. And uh, an artwork of good quality. I mean, the kind that will uplift your spirits and will say, okay, good job, well done children. Mm -hmm. Keep it going. So that kind of work. And uh, because we are an ATL school, yeah. so uh, uh, innovation and... Uh, you know, right now, the children of uh, class 11, they are, uh, they, their project has been selected by IBM in a competition that was national. Uh, and uh, it came to CBSC, actually, the opportunity. So, uh, it wouldn't be right for me to give away their project because it's a competition. And uh, but is they focusing on how to identify drunken drivers in a car? Okay. So it, it's interesting to have children take up uh, these kind of uh, uh, thoughts. And I remember there was a student who came to me a few days ago before the school uh, closed. Uh, a student of I think probably class three or four. And uh, because the school asked uh, children to submit their names uh, uh, for what projects they'd like to work on in the lab. And he said, ma'am, the, the poor uh, laborer on the road who walks, the poor man, he doesn't have electricity uh, connections to charge his phone. He can buy a phone, which is now very cheap, but charging it and having electricity access is difficult. So isn't there a way that we can trap the energy generated by the footsteps as they walk on the road, you know? And can that, is there a way to trap that and that can be used to uh, energize the phone? Well, uh, I had to confess that I don't know enough science to know whether this can be done personally, I don't know. But I said, I know the teacher you must go to. And she will tell you when and how it is possible and you know what you need to do. So that's what I did. I put the child in touch with uh, uh, our uh, ATL mentor. I think that's just so happened. you know it's a it's beautiful world uh, where children children themselves are constantly extending the horizons. Yeah. And if teachers are willing to walk uh, yeah. the extra mile with them, yeah. uh, then I guess uh, it should be possible for a lot of good things to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we had um, children power cut just yeah. Yeah, I think uh, yes, I, I yeah. see that. Yes, now you're always very clear now. Yeah. So but I think I'm, uh, yeah. So 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 as you rightly said that our and aesthetics has to be an integral part of the uh, STEM, STEM which has been expanded to STEEM. And I think at yes. Greater yes. Faisalabad, A, the art and aesthetics is really becoming the fulcrum of it all. And, uh, and in practice, we can see it all through the experimentations because the humane side of it is really coming out. And one key takeaway which I'm seeing from uh, this interaction and uh, your splendid execution is contextualizing your dreams you rightly said that you have to be aware of the global information but then you didn't shut down the local context now that makes yes. your execution really profound and this is one key takeaway because when national policies are entrusted upon the entire set of say 18,000 21,000 schools uh, it doesn't take into account of the independent universes in which the school yes, beautiful word. independent universes. Yeah, that's so right. There cannot be a one size fit all kind of a thing. It's all uniqueness over there, and this is something which makes and you have brought it out so beautifully. Even after being at top of the league, 
you still have that uh, consideration that we have also constraints. So that is the mark of real genius that they appreciate and understand that where they are ace at and where, uh, uh, where their slingshot will not, uh, where they are not attempting it across. I, I think that balance, that profound balance between science and art and the whole uh, community which you are leading, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a remarkable thing, ma'am. Uh, just uh, uh, we are at the close of this interaction, a wonderful one. It can go on and on. It's like an infinite engagement. Uh, it's such a lovely interaction. But I would like to play that another lovely video uh, which you have curated that Can I Name a Star? For us, your institution is a star, a sparkling North Pole star in the whole cosmos. Uh, but we will thank you. <laughs> so, thank you so much. So I will just play this lovely video. What an inspiring yeah. storyline it has behind. And uh, because, uh, uh, and, and the beauty is that it's all created in house. It's all. Uh, yes, it's absolutely. All, absolutely. absolutely. So, so in, in fact, you will see that Amara's image we have reused only changed the color of a frock. Yes. Uh, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so that, that was done by an art teacher of our school. And, uh, that's, yeah. a, that's also that, uh, one more thing I would like to impress upon our, our uh, viewers, the larger uh, viewers, that it's the entire team spirit which has come through. You have given examples of your art teacher that how she gave a call at 11.45 in the night. She could. Yeah. Because she felt connected with her principal. You were not a boss oh, for her. Yes, absolutely. It was like, absolutely. Family, like to a senior person in the family, you can just ring up at 11.45 in the night with a right, with a connection. Oh, yeah. It just doesn't happen. No. <laughs> so, I mean, our, we see, um, to be uh, on a human level, if you're not connected with each other, then what I, what's your connection? Yeah. True, true. So, ma'am, I will just yes. take your leave and play this because this is thank such you. a lovely video. And uh, thank you for the honor to my school family. And I thank you on behalf of our Pro VC, Mr. Rohit Janendra Jain, for this wonderful opportunity to bring my school alive in a conversation with you. Thank you very much. Yeah, very yeah. great. Thank you. Just thank you, both of you. Thanks a lot. Thank Please you, Rita. Please be here. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Hello, children. Let's enjoy a tale on childhood and happy family memories. Our story begins with a question. What is the meaning of the word tedious? Little Amara's question took Nanuma by surprise as they sat together on the terrace after dinner. Well, tedious means tiring. But where did you hear this word, Amara? From you, you said it, Nanima, by washing the mask you wear to the market. Oh, I see. Maybe somewhere in my heart, I long for fun times when no one ever works. Fun times like when? Just too many to choose from. Uh, like the time when the moment my school closed for summer holidays, I would pack my stuff and head home with my kids to my parents' farmhouse in Betinda, as did my sisters. We all used to be excited as seeds bursting out of the pot. Gee, Mama and Big Daddy, as my parents were called by all their grandchildren, and showed happy holiday time for us. And post dinner, just like you and I are sitting on the terrace here, we all would head to our huge terrace to plan next day's new thrills, share jokes, and catch up with each other. One of our favorite activities as a family was naming a star. Yes. All we had to do was to choose a star of our own choice from all the stars visible in the sky and then attach a happy memory to that star to make it a forever family memory 
and we loved giving these stars funny and crazy names. In those days, the night skies used to be brilliantly lit with hundreds of sparkling stars to choose from. It was such great fun, Amara. Did you also have a star of your own, Nani Ma? Mm -hmm. Oh yes, I did. So many of them. Let me tell you about one star of your mom, Niharika, and her twin sister, your Jessica Masi. Amara was visibly excited now. As a little one, Niharika was a total fighter. She loved playing all day and fought sleep with full gusto in the evening. And so there was a total parade with singing, tram rides, cajoling and what not to make her sleep. On the other hand, Jessica was adorably cooperative. So we called Jessica Star, yes, 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 Star. And Niharika Star was called the Warrior Star. Tissue, tissue. Amara burst into peals of laughter. Can I choose a star and name it too, please? Of course you can. Let's do it right now. Amara gazed intently at the city sky and thought harder than she had ever thought before. And suddenly, with eyes as bright as a lighthouse beam, she pointed to a bright star and said, That is my star. And my star's name is Hugs and Hugs Star. Every night, when my mom puts me to sleep, she says, Hugs and hugs, Amara, sleep well. I like that very much. Do you think it's a nice name, Nanima? Of course. That's an awesome name and an awesome forever memory, too. Together, Nanima and Amara waved lovingly to the chosen star. The joy on Amara's face can only be imagined. I hope, dear children, you will enjoy finding your own special star and naming it with a forever memory for you and your family to enjoy. I'll see you soon with another Suroko tale. Bye-bye. What a lovely... Thank you. What a lovely correlation and uh, associating with your own self with a star. So I think that it has a lot of literary meaning and the kind of profound philosophical foundations you come from. You are really driving the kids to unravel the genius within, the appropriateness within. Uh, this is uh, really stupendous, ma'am. It was our privilege uh, to learn so much from you in these 45 minutes. And thanks Thank for taking out your valuable time from your uh, from your extra busy schedule of mentoring 200 tutors, <laughs> teachers, uh, torch bearers of an Atmanirbhar Bharat, I would say. And I would like yes. to say that the way you have your entire team, I, I would like to give a bow and a salute to the entire team because without any external dependence, you have all come together as a profound team and created an Atmanirbha DPS Greater Faridabad. Because in terms of IT, there was no external team coming in, no. team training, all processes all. were all yes. done by you. And this yes. is the way forward, I think, what Prime Minister Modi has said, that every institution, when it takes out the vow and it embarks upon such a glorious journey which you have, I think Atmanirbha Bharat won't even take a decade. With this kind of work and with this kind of commitment, ma'am, with these uh, words of gratitude, we will take a leap uh, at this juncture. Thanks a lot. And Thanks a lot. learning masterclass for all of us. Sir. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, both of you, from my school family and from my pro VC, Mr. Rohit Janindra Jain. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am.